Jason is on the line. Hi, Jason. Where are you calling from? Hi, Leo. Calling from uh, Manhattan, Kansas. Nice to talk to you. There he is. Hey. So, Jason, tell us, uh, tell us your question. Well, I've been a long time Linux. Sorry, Linux user. I grew up uh, calling it Linux. But, I know. Uh, I know. A lot Linux. of people did. Yeah. Um, but I've got a handful of older computers, uh, netbooks. Uh, we're talking Core 2 duos, nothing really older than that. I've tried some of the slimmed down versions of Linux, either uh, Lubuntu or LXDE, mm -hmm. uh, even Puppy Linux. Now, Puppy's a little too techy. Uh, I'd like something that I, a slimmed down version that'll run well. It, looking to run uh, Flash, uh, oh. DVDs. I Flash? Know. Flash, I know. Oh. Still trying to run YouTube. Uh, well, you don't uh, need YouTube. doesn't need Flash anymore. So you oh, can, that's true. You're right. Yeah. I'm, I'm hoping that, we, it, by the way, who needs Flash? Twit.tv still runs it. Because <laughs> we use a player. We don't have control of it that plays back Ustream and BitGravity, and they're using Flash. Although they're moving away from it, as our providers do. I'm hoping we won't see Flash much longer. It's dying, as, as, as everybody knows. As um, it should. So, but I'm looking, I'm looking for our suggestions for something else that's, uh, maybe, maybe not something else, but a different spin of uh, Linux that works well with older hardware, yeah. but not too techy. Something that I can put on it and basically hand to my mom. Uh, <laughs> there's the kicker. Unfortunately, yeah. this is almost a contradiction in terms, right? And I think this is kind of non-intuitive, but I've always said that the more a person is a novice, the better the computer they need, not the vice versa, because they're going to need more help, more hand-holding. Let's, let me, I'm going to do Which a Mr. I can do. I'm going to do a Mr. Scuzzy, if you don't mind. Remember Mr. Scuzzy? Of course I remember Mr. Scuzzy. <laughs> you created him. I did. Uh, Martin Sargent used to be our explainer-in-chief. He'd come in. I think Mr. Scuzzy, what, did he have, well, like, well, hard drives in his coat? Like, like he, and I, I had uh, borrowed Larry Wangberg's trench coat. Yeah. And I had all these SCSI cables hanging. I was like, <laughs> you want to buy a SCSI cable? <laughs> that was it. But for a long time on the screensavers, you would explain how all this stuff works. Right, works. but it, it wasn't always SCSI cables. No, it was, no. It was all kinds all sorts of, of stuff. very difficult and concepts. To your credit, you would have the chalkboard, and you'd come in several hours earlier and draw a really elaborate, nice illustration. That's right. That is not what this is going to be. <laughs> I can As you see. can see, I am starting with a blank slate, quite literally. All right. But let me um, talk uh, a little bit about Linux, because I think we use this kind of generic term Linux for something that's really so much more. The only thing that's Linux is the stuff way down here. This is the kernel. And that's the stuff that Linus Torvalds wrote back in 1994 or 92 when he was a graduate student in uh, Finland. He wrote the kernel and still maintains it. He, what's nice about uh, uh, Linus is, even though he invented it, he didn't patent it. He didn't keep it to himself. He said he let the world have it. All he did was he trademarked the word Linux. So he is the official dictator for life of this term. And only Linus can say that something is or is not Linux. But what makes it Linux generally is this low down thing that's in the kernel. Now, you're using this Linux kernel in more places than you might realize. A Chromebook is using Linux kernel. Android uses the Linux kernel. Mm. So the Linux kernel is, is quite ubiquitous, but it is not what makes a Linux distribution. On top of that, you're going to have, you know, the, uh, you're going to have the, the process initializer and various demons that are running on top of that. In fact, there's a big controversy right now in the Linux community over whether you use something called systemd, which most Linux distributions are using that's on top of that that starts processes like your server um, you know your your print drivers things like that on top of that there'll be some middleware some system software and then on top of that there's applications and then most importantly what you're talking about which is the desktop manager and the desktop environment that's what you see Normally, in fact, a lot of times when I'm working in Linux, I work in the terminal. I'm working in the command line, which is below that. So Linux is like the old days in Windows. Remember, in the, in the earliest days of Windows, Windows uh, 3 and Windows 95, this Windows, Windows was this, and then they put a window manager on top of it. But you could always drop out into the DOS command. Mm -hmm. You were still running DOS. You know, that kind of is what this equals down here. So this is what you see, this is what your mom sees, is the desktop environment and the desktop manager. The desktop manager is what she logs in with. And there's a lot of different choices. This is what, basically, all of this is roughly the same weight. In other words, you, you're saying, I want something that runs on a, a lightweight processor. It's this that makes that difference, right? 
It's this that uses all the memory, all these CPU cycles, drawing menus, drawing windows, and all of that. And there's a whole bunch of them. The, there's the two big ones are the KDE environment and GNOME. And these are, GNOME was originally a protest to KDE. And now what's funny is people don't like GNOME. And so, of course, open source full of protests. There are responses to GNOME. One is called Mate, M-A-T-E. And this is particularly lightweight. And another one that's very popular right now is called Cinnamon. These are desktop environments. All of them sit on the same thing down here. But this is what mom and you will see. That's the command line, that, uh, rather the, the graphic user interface. So that's the windows, that's the menus. There are some of these that are more lightweight than others. GNOME is probably the heaviest. It's the one I use, actually. GNOME 3 is really great. Mate is based on GNOME 2.0. And, it, and the reason they did that is because it's a little bit lighter weight. GNOME, when it first came out, 3.0 was probably not very good. Um, this is what's used in Mint. You probably heard about Linux Mint. This is all the rage now with the kids today because it reminds them of Windows. So they use Cinnamon on top of a Linux distribution, and it really is Windows-like. Here's the one I'm going to recommend for you. It's called XFCE. <coughs> Now the problem with this, and by the way, the distribution that, that runs on it is an Ubuntu distribution called XUbuntu. Ubuntu. And U-B-U-N-T-U, or Shubuntu or XUbuntu. I left out a U there. Um, the XFCE uh, desktop uh, environment is very lightweight. The problem is the one that your mom wants is more heavyweight, is more like Windows, right? Is, or Macintosh. It's easier to use because it has icons and menus and uh, desktop effects. But that's what uses all the RAM and all the processor power. So what are you doing right now? Are you kind of just booting into different ones, see what you like? Almost all of these allow you to do that with what they call the live... CD, which actually doesn't have to be on a CD, it could be on a memory stick. Uh, actually, I'm using a UNet boot in to uh, create live uh, USB. Yep. That's exactly what you do. In fact, if I had my uh, man bag here, I have about 20 different distributions on USB sticks in my. Because no, I think I only have five. Why not, right? So you can try <laughs> exactly. them all. Zero. Uh, none, really. You've settled. You're, 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 but which version of Linux do you prefer? Uh, uh, Ubuntu. Yeah. Well, Ubuntu, by the way, uses something called Unity. Uh, well, which, it's, it's South African for humanity towards I others. I know, I know. And it's, of course, yeah, South yeah. African entrepreneur Mark uh, Shuttleworth that created Ubuntu. Ubuntu is great. Um, I'm not really crazy about Unity, and it's nothing. It's definitely not lightweight. That's why there's Shubuntu, which is the same. See, it's all the same Ubuntu stuff down here, but on top of it, a desktop environment that's fairly lightweight called XFCE. I would look at that one. Okay. Okay. And then... It, you know, the problem is people look at this and they go, oh, that doesn't look like Windows, it doesn't look like a Macintosh. Underneath, it's all the same. <laughs> but it's so just it's this... a Mac almost. Yeah. Well, actually, the Mac is uh, based on BSD. Yeah, and it's, it's it very is. similar. It's a Unix-like uh, operating system. Actually, it is Unix. Um, so XFCE may not be quite to your taste. If mom or whoever is using it says, ah, I don't like this, try Cinnamon. Cinnamon's pretty light. Now, I don't recommend Mint because the problem with Mint, really Mint is just Ubuntu with cinnamon on top, which actually sounds quite tasty. <laughs> but uh, the problem with it is the, the, the people behind Cinnamon have done some things that I'm not crazy about that I think make you a little bit less secure. In fact, they had a security problem on their own website uh, a short while ago where people actually downloaded a, a modified version of Mint that had malware in it. That's been fixed. The problem is that in order to keep this all working, they have kind of blocked updates from upstream. And so you're not often getting the latest security things. What I would actually suggest you do, if you're gonna try Cinnamon, is download Debian, right. which is what Ubuntu's based on. So it's kind of confusing. They took Debian, they put Ubuntu on top of it, Cinnamon took Ubuntu and put a mint took Ubuntu and put cinnamon on top of it. But you can, when you, if you download Debian and don't download the rolling version, download the stable version. You always want to download the stable version unless you're like a cutting edge kind of guy. Download Jesse, which is the current stable version. Right. And when you install it, you can choose the desktop environment on top of it. And cinnamon is one of the choices. That's the best way to do cinnamon. So Debian Jesse with the cinnamon desktop environment. 
That's not too heavyweight. That should run on a cork, okay. too, I think. If you really need lightweight, XFCE is probably the best weight. Mate, mate, or mate. I call it mate because I think it's based on <laughs> herba mate. I think it is. I don't think it's mate. I think it's herba mate, you know? Um, All right, I'll give that a shot. That's very lightweight as well because it's GNOME 2. And I think that's a, probably the next best easy to use. But so understand what you're asking for. This is all the same. You know, there, there may be some optimizations here, but it's essentially the same. It's the desktop interface on top of it that gets fat and heavy and bloated. And unfortunately, the ones that are easiest to use are often the most bloated. They have all the nice WYSIWYG features. That's why Windows is so bloated, because all, they put a lot of effort into the user interface, right, on top of uh, what was underneath. So. Well, thanks, Leo, for clearing that all up. <laughs> if only Mr. Scuzzy had come and done an illustration. I never was very good at this. Mm -hmm. But you get the, I think you, I think you get the idea of what I'm talking about here. You, it's a trade-off. And uh, I love cinnamon. I think that's the one that's going to make people happiest is people love it because it's a very familiar feeling. If you need lightweight XFCE, and I wouldn't probably get Mint. I would get Debian with, uh, with, with cinnamon or XFCE. Cinnamon. You can do, by the way, all of these Windows managers will run on Debian. So you just choose the one you want. Be oh, one okay. more thing. Be careful. Once you choose one, it, y you can, but it takes some expertise to move to another one. So if you choose a KDE-based desktop mm. interface and you move to GNOME, now you got problems because you you're, mixing, you're mixing up different applications and stuff, and it can cause problems. So I would recommend doing what you're doing right now, which is trying different live interfaces till you find one you like and then install that one. Okay, I've, I've, I've never downloaded uh, or never tried just a base version of Debian, so I'll give that a shot. Oh, I'm a big Debian fan. That's, that's my favorite. Yes. Uh, someday we'll talk about, though, the SystemD issue, because Debian, unfortunately, in, uh, about a year ago, decided to move to SystemD, and a lot of people are very upset about that. But if you, if you look around, the other thing about Debian is uh, if you have drivers on your laptop that are what we call non-free, and by non-free, I don't mean that you have to pay for them, but they're not open source. They're patented by Intel or... Uh, Realtek or Broadcom, they are there are Debian distros you can search for it that are not that have the non-free drivers built in that simplifies the installation quite a bit. <laughs> not that. Complicated. All right, Leo, I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's like Windows Home, Windows Pro, Windows Starter. No, it's not like that at all. Hey, thanks for the call. I appreciate it. Wow. I all right, hope that you, helps. Leo. Will you let me know what you choose and why? I will do that. Send us an email because I'm really curious what people are choosing. Sounds good, thanks. There, there are lots of then uh, weirdo distributions that have very, are design, like elementary.io, somebody in the chat room is mentioning, that are designed to be pretty. I make me very nervous. I would stick with the big flavors like Debian or Ubuntu and then try different desktop wow. managers. I'm really looking forward to that pet tech segment. <laughs>